Welcome back, everyone. The last time we put together this Mark II, and now we're going to be making the joint assembly and sticking that on, as well as prepping up our horns and sticking on and shaping those. So first thing we have is our 10 millimeter joint where I attached a horn on the bottom straight. And now we have this straight tube that I pulled down. It's about 12, 13 millimeters. We want to get a nice gradual bend in this tube so that it kind of matches the contour and lines of the clear can. We'll fine adjustments, heating it up in a soft flame so that you're able to bend it right where you need it. Check that, line it up. There's a lot of in and outs on the kiln on this where you're checking to line things up. I'm gonna blow out a small hole here where we'll attach the joint. Checking and lining that up, checking it against the can. And I noticed the top part of that above the hole I'm working on is a little too long, so I'll end up trimming off a little bit of that. Keep things nice and hot. We'll go back in here and attach these two. Keeping focus on both openings is always tricky, so you got to make sure to just really line them up. And I stuck this one together wrong and had to pull it back apart. Hold it up and down, line it up. And then we're going to use the clear handle here, act as a bridge. And then we're going to wrap it around here, attaching it to the tip of the horn. This is really just a quick way to do it. I could spend more time attaching a bridge and doing it in a proper manner, but I find that these moves save me a little bit of time, my attention towards the weld. Get that all buttered in, give it a nice flame anneal, and we're going to remove the bridge. this little scrap end of tubing on there. I don't want to throw away because I'm ultimately going to use it to attach on the side of this tube, which will connect to the can. So I just grabbed a punty, popped a hole in it, and set that in the kiln for later. Trim off the edge, give it a nice flame anneal before we go in and check it on our can. And I noticed it wasn't quite lined up, so we're going to go into a soft heat and bend it a little bit more. The most important part when you're trying to get these soft bends is to heat up a lot more area than you need, but keep it at that nice soft taffy state so it doesn't start to flop around. I always usually heat up a third more area than I need on each side. We're gonna flatten that top bubble of our tube. Kinda matches the line of the rig keeping those shoulders all flat and parallel with each other. Getting a nice soft base heat to our horn. Because it's such a close proximity to the tube that we've pulled, I'm gonna have to just taper the horn a little bit and then go in with my tweezers and actually push it to where I want it to be. Never underestimate the use of these tweezers when pulling horns. As long as you keep the tip solid, you're able to really use those to push it around quite a bit. So now that we got the joint assembly all lined up and we got the proper taper, we're gonna focus on where we want that hole to be for the tube that we'll attach to the can. Key a small spot, check it against the can to see if that's where you want it, and then blow it out. There we go. So earlier we saved a little piece of tubing this will be used as that connecting tube to the can. Trim up the lip. Nice and even. You don't want this piece of tubing to be too thick because it's really going to make the weld go a lot quicker. Not paper thin, but I'd almost suggest 2 mil or less. Maybe not quite 
under two mil, but not super thick. You'll have to end up tearing a lot of this tubing off, but it's better to have a lot more than you need. Just go and four corner that weld. Try not to blow it out too much so that we keep the contour of our tubes. Again, that's why I keep it nice and thin. And then when I start picking this gloss away, I'm always kind of pulling away at an angle just like I did on the perk. This helps match that shape of the rig, keeping that weld nice and thin. Remove little bits of glass at a time and then check it against the can. I always open these holes up a little bit bigger than what I'm gonna need because ultimately when we get it hot, it will condense down a little bit. Just gives you a little bit more room for error. Line it up and looking pretty good. So this next part we're going to be attaching two bridges. One will be a temporary bridge and one will be a permanent bridge which will actually reinforce the joint assembly to the can. It's just a little bit of elixir that I've kind of attached on the lower shoulder of the neck. I really enjoy this placement of this first bridge because it helps reinforce the joint assembly to the neck and allows me to get as close as I can. Getting that nice and straight. And attaching our temporary bridge now using a 7mm. You can use a 5mm too. Something smaller is just fine. I prefer the bigger stuff because it makes it a little bit stronger. Trimming that up. This is our 10mm roach. It's just a 10mm joint that we've closed off and put on a punty which I will use to hold the joint assembly before I attach it. Just pop it off of our other blow tube and set it on our Kevlar sleeve. Pick it up. Go back in and make a little final adjustment to that opening before I stick it on. Next thing we're gonna do here is pop open a hole from the perk. When doing this you want to make sure you really focus on the center and so you don't blow out the can wall. I've done that before and it's never fun. Get our reamer in there and open it up a little bit. Before we go in for this stick we get a nice big base heat to it so that we have a lot of time to sit there and make adjustments and get that thing welded in. Stick it on, line it up, Bridge it up. Go back in for a nice base heat. Finish off that weld. This is a pretty close proximity weld as far as trying to get minimal tolerance or having low tolerance to work with. One of the biggest challenges with this design was to get this joint assembly to be as close to the sidewall of the can as possible. I noticed that over time, this tube being shorter and shorter and closer and closer was really what allowed me to get it this nice. I still think it needs some work, but I'm really happy where this piece is coming and where the overall design has pushed me in the last few years. Now we're going to go in here and do the permanent bridge, taking a small pulled down stringer of that elixir. I'm just going to kind of go in and fill in the gap in between that tube and that small piece of color we attached earlier. This is a pretty challenging part because I get really, really picky about the shape of this bridge. I want it to be a nice solid rod, just like a nice straight 8 mil section. It tends to bunch up in the middle, so it's really just take your time. Maybe add a little bit of glass on the ends if it gets too thin. Kind of using your torch to kind of brush the glass up and down. And we're looking pretty good. We got ourselves a finished Mark II can. So we're going to take one of these rods of color, clean it up real good using some glass cleaner or alcohol. I prefer the blue paper towels because they actually have way less lint on them compared to the standard white ones. In a small flame we're going to pick a spot which is about halfway and fold it. Take a 7mm rod, 
put it on the end of that fold. Get it nice and centered. Grab another seven mil. Kind of close off the other two open ends and then start twisting it up. I really like this method of gathering up the glass because it's fast. You tend to get more striations going and twisty cane type of striations, but if you get it really hot and twist a lot, the glass will actually even out and those bubbles will start to suspend evenly within the glass. So you lose that striation. Some people really like it, but I tend to go for that more straight color. Just twist it all up, back it all into a straight solid chunk. You don't have to push it this far and make this nice straight pieces like I did. I tend to do this because it helps me see visually how much glass I have and how much I want to use for what size horns. Now that we have this color all kind of backed up into a nice chunk, we're going to break it down into half. This first half will be used for two horns. The first two horns will be one big one and one small one right next to each other. Just kind of slowly pulling down those tapers. I really like these shorter, stockier horns. So I try not to give them too much of a taper before I stick them on and pull them. We'll go in and then grab the other side. This one was a little bit long, so I had to trim some off. You end up wasting some glass, but I feel like it's more important to take the time to focus on proportions with these horns. Just that little bit of an extra can make the glass pull that much more and you end up with too long of a horn and the piece just doesn't look that right. I get really really picky with these proportions because aesthetically I want them all to look like they're supposed to be there, not like they're forced to be there. So just get rid of a little bit of that glass. On these bigger horns, I tend to use a little bit bigger of a punty rod because they tend to break off. But everything else I use like a four mil. That was like a five mil. Set those two in the kiln. I'm gonna take this last piece and pull it down into two horns as well. These two horns will be on the opposite side but on the higher shoulder of the can. Still a pair, but one larger than the other. Pony up. Split it in half. Marver those down in the shape you want. Again, I try and make them shorter and stubbier to get these nice thicker horns. Take your time, get the shapes you want. So real quick before we start sticking on horns, we're gonna trim down the bottom of this joint assembly so that it matches the contour just above flush with the ground and parallel with the shoulders. Here we go. Ready to let it soak for a few minutes and stick on these horns. We start with the biggest one. And throughout this process of sticking these on, I'm going to show you different ways to go about that process. And some are quicker, some are more safe. This first one is probably the safest way to do larger horns because I'm actually going to bridge it up. Get a big base heat to it and stick it on. Heat up your punty and bridge it to the already existing bridge for your joint. Butter that in. Again, trying to do this process relatively fast. Always have your flame anneal ready 
so you can add some heat to it and give you more time to finish off that weld. And because this is bridge, you can really butter it in, let the glass flow together and get that even transition. I like to flame a needle a lot, helps kind of even out the heat gradient in between the weld I just did and all the glass that has cooled down. Remove our bridge. And then we'll go back in the kiln, let it soak before I shape this horn up. After a good soak, we'll again go back in for a nice base heat. Start heating this horn up for our shape. I should also note that the more you kick these horns out when you stick them on, the more of a curve they're going to have. So if you stick them on more straight up and down, they have a less of a curve. It's all preference. Going in, getting that nice even base heat. Nice good pull and curve. I was really happy with that one. The bigger horns tend to be a lot harder because it's more glass to heat up and keep even. But that one went really well. Heated up the base at the end there and tucked it along the side of the can. As close as we can get it. Going in for horn number two. Get our nice base heat just like we did before. Placing it right next to that big one. We're going to do this attachment and shaping a little bit differently. Where we're actually not going to bridge it. We're just going to tear off that punty and do a four corner weld on it. This again just shows you that there's not really one right way to stick on and attach things. It's really just a matter of what you're comfortable with and how much time you're willing to spend or how much time you ultimately have. We didn't kill this one either. We went in for another base heat. We're going to pull this all in one. These smaller horns are easier to do this way because it's less glass to have to heat up. I also think you do save a little bit of time not bridging it up and just doing that four corner weld. Running up and down the length of the horn, focusing our heat at the base and less at the top, pulling up straight and pulling in towards the can at the same time. One final adjustment at the end there with our tweezers. Looking pretty good. got two more horns to stick on and we're done. This is also the more basic standard sort of Mark II where I only stick on the four horns. I definitely like pushing it and really going all out with it but wanted to keep it nice and simple today. These horns are a little bit more important to stick on at an angle and push and do that wiggle. It kind of helps flatten out the transition in between where the glass meets, keeping it nice and smooth like it's one piece. The weld to the can on these horns is probably the more important part to me because if it doesn't look right and if it doesn't have an even transition, it just kind of stands out. It doesn't really flow with the piece. It doesn't really look like it was meant to be there. Again, going in for a nice even base heat on these ones. This one we had to do in multiple stages because I didn't quite get it hot enough when I first went in. And that's okay. Don't have to do it all in one. Give that piece a nice heat in the kiln and going back in for this final horn attachment. This is the last horn and the smallest one so it's pretty easy to just stick on, weld up and shape all in one heat. It wasn't quite pulled as much as I wanted to when I stuck it on so I just kind of gave it a little tug before I went into that final shape. Trim up the end, pull it, voila. After a nice soak in the kiln, we're going to pick up our grabbers, giving them a nice preheat too, to remove our handle and bridge all in one move. I'm not going to open up this mouthpiece quite yet. I'm going to focus on bending my neck first. 
because I have those horns there, it's a little tricky. I have to do some fancy maneuvering to get that base heat that I want. Using my paddle there, I'm just going to push the neck back, getting a nice gradual bend to it. Really that's to match the contour of the can, match the contour of that joint assembly and those horns. Really all just pushing that slight curve throughout the whole piece. Clean up our mouthpiece and open it up. Take your time to polish off the mouthpiece, open it up and make that hole nice and round. And there we have it guys, that's a finished Mark II. It's been really, really fun doing this for you guys and I really hope somebody learned something. I hope somebody enjoyed it and I hope somebody was inspired. But it's all about, man, creating art every day and using it to inspire ourselves and inspire others. Thank you very much for joining.